Hey, thanks for joining us for Digging Deeper on this Christmas Eve week. So Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm trusting that you're probably watching this after Christmas Day. I hope you had just a wonderful time of hope, peace, joy, and love with your family and loved ones. I want to press in a little bit on this idea of God is love. And there was a statement that um, we made in the sermon that because God is love, then God's love is about God and not us. And so here's the thing. I know we can hear that and think, well, does that mean that God doesn't love me? No, God who is love must love. In the same sense that a fly is called a fly because it flies. <laughs> the nature of something determines its behavior, determines what it does. God's nature, in essence, is love. Therefore, God must love. Now, here's the place of security. I want to read again to you Romans 8, 38 and 39, because this is our place of security, and I'm going to connect these two things. So, verse 38 and 39 in Romans 8, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, let me ask you a question. If you were held in a loving relationship with God that meant that 50% of the relationship was Him loving you and 50% was you loving Him, and that's what held the relationship together, would you really trust your ability to love God perfectly, endlessly, and flawlessly to keep you in His presence? Here's the point. To say that because God is love, that means that His love for us is all about Him and not us, is to say that the thing that holds us in loving relationship with God is His love for us. It's not contingent on our love for Him. It's not contingent on us being lovable to Him. It's not contingent on us being a certain way or, or being a certain kind of person. Because God is love and God's love is about God, not us, then Romans 8, 38 and 39 can actually be true. If it was about my love towards God that held me in God rather than Christ holding me in God, if it was about my ability to prove myself lovable, if it was about me doing the right thing or desiring the, the holy things or seeking God in a certain way and, and investing in that kind of relationship from my end, if it was about any of those things, these two verses in Romans 8 wouldn't be true because there would be something that could separate me from the love of God and it would be me. It would be my turning away. It would be my failing. It would be my, my insufficiency in loving Him with all I am. It would be the way my heart drifts into other desires and other loves and puts God at the back burner sometimes. And so to say that God's love for us is about God, it was never about us, is to actually say that God holds us in His love regardless of what we've done, what we desire, or what we will do. Because by placing us in Christ, He secures us in His love, just as this says in Romans 8, 39. Nothing can, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Think of Colossians 3, but you are hidden with Christ in God. This is the important thing to understand about God's love. God's love is both the invitation and the security. It is the foundation of the relationship and the mortar that binds us together. We can never think of ourselves as holding ourselves in God's love. We have to understand that it is a total act of immeasurable grace. For God to love us as we are, even when we're undeserving of that love. And it's responding to that grace that says to him, I want to place myself, my faith, 
my trust in Christ so that I will never be separated from your love. And in the times when I turn away, I am not separated from your love. In the times when I stumble and fall and seek lesser things and my affections draw me towards the world instead of towards you, I will not be separated from your love. In the times when evil comes in, and I am actually the perpetrator of it. I will not be separated from your love if I am in Christ. My failings can't do it. Nothing can separate me from your love because it was never about my love for you. It was always about your love for me because you are love. And so I hope that helps you see a picture of why it's important, why it's actually good news and freeing to understand that God's love for us was never about us. It was always about God. And you think back to the covenant that God makes with Abraham when he, when he sanctifies that covenant and, and the fire comes down and burns up the offering and Abraham splits the sacrifice and the blood channels down the center of it. There's a, a, a statement in there of God where God essentially says, look, Abraham, I'm going to keep my side of the covenant with you and I'm going to keep your side of the covenant with me. So God keeps that covenant. That is a picture of what it means to be held by God in Christ. Once we say, I will put my faith and my trust in you. So God's love is the bond of that covenant between he and I. And he fulfills his side of the covenant, and he fulfills my side of the covenant by placing me in Christ. So I hope that helps. Here's what I don't want. I don't want us to ever feel like because of our failings, our shortcomings, our, our past, our experiences, or even when, when we seek the things of the world instead of God, I don't ever want us to think that somehow that lessens God's love for us. It doesn't. Because his love was never about me. It was about him. So I hope that's helpful. Hope you have a great time in your groups, having some great discussion. I'd love for you to just kind of press through this idea of God is holding me in his love. And his love makes me secure, not the frailty or the fickleness of my love. I'm safe in his love. His love. My love is simply a response, an imperfect, flawed Shallow response, albeit, but a response to the fact that he's holding me in his love. Have a great time in your groups. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for this love that we get to experience at Christmas. Just the joy and the peace and the hope and love that is Jesus. Give him a place to dwell in our hearts, to rest in us, in these hearts that are like a manger completely inappropriate for the creator of the universe to abide in and yet you choose to be there and let that abiding in us lead to generosity of love for all and we ask that in Jesus name amen Merry Christmas